All right, so name's Michal. I work in one of those large companies as an SRE, which means I care about things working, not very much about what they do. And uh, I want to talk to you about making monitoring boring, uh, explaining why boring is good in, in process. Right, so first, some audience participation. How many of you run a production service? Lots of people, wonderful, good. So, making monitoring boring. First, some basic concepts. So we know what monitoring is, right? Monitoring is when you collect and process data, evaluate it. I will mostly be talking about tactical monitoring, which means short term detecting, detecting the, the wrong conditions, not the right conditions, alerting on it, all that. Right, boring is obvious. Excitement is probably obvious. How many of you got page at 2 a.m.? last this year, for example? No one? You're lucky. Oh, ah, right. See? Right. We all know what a kitten is, but just in case. Uh, kittens are important. Right. So, imagine you just built a thing. You build a product. It's new. It's wonderful. It's probably very buzzword compliant. It's called kitten.io because that's how you name a thing. It's disruptive. I don't know what that means, but they all are. And agile, and probably distributed, though not very much. And it provides kittens as a service. Right, I even have a demo. Does this work? Oh, yes, some of you might know this one. Right, so I will leave this running. And see, cat, cat. Oh, a 500. It's broken. And another cat. Brilliant. So as you can see, it's, it's mostly working, but not quite well. Right. So and time goes, and you serve lots of kittens, and life is beautiful, and then you have your first outage. And uh, your phone rings, because you have no monitoring, of course. So someone calls you, probably your mother, or someone calls you, someone you know and tells you there are no kittens, and you debug and debug and debug, and it's still all very broken, and you find out you need monitoring because it turns out it's better if you, a machine tells you it's broken than, than if your mother tells you it's broken, or, you know, high school classmates, someone. You, people just tell you. Right. So you decide to do some monitoring. So you install a thing, I, I will not name any things, but it's probably Zabbix or something like that. MR, no, MRTG is dead. Something. You install a thing. And you collect everything. You collect stuff like, oh my, there's a typo, I'm sorry. Uh, you collect stuff like the load average of your server and if it's over one per CPU you page, because of course that's terrible, right? And you check that everything is running, all the backends and everything, and and that your disks are not too full and everything. And you page, and you page a lot. And uh, this does detect some outages of every 10, say 97 or so. So there are a few false positives once in a while, uh, most of them. And sometimes it, de it detects the real outages, which is very useful because you want to know about those. Not always, but sometimes it does. So you improve on it. Right, so life is very exciting, but instead of being exciting because your stuff is broken, it's exciting because your stuff is broken and you get paged a lot, which is probably much more fun. Right, so you improve stuff. You, you discover black box monitoring, which means testing from the outside that things work, which they sometimes do. And uh, you find out that there are different levels of alerting, as in there are pages, which means your phone beeps and you panic, and there are tickets, which means your, you get an email or a thing, and you get to it sometime, in a week or so. And it becomes complicated. After, in this model, after a few years, you have this huge bunch of alerts, which detect various specific conditions which you know can cause breakage, and which are all terrible, and some of them page, some of them ticket, and some of them do both or something. 
uh, no one really remembers what's what and why. So you ask your coworkers and they don't remember either, but you have to keep this, right? It's monitoring, it's very important. If you drop this alert, the next outage will be caused by the condition that detects, of course, because life is terrible. Right, so instead of excitement, I mean, you still get lots of excitement, but you get confusion. Confusion is great. It's almost as good as excitement. Right, so now that you have a problem, I will try to propose a solution, which is, it's not my idea, really. So somebody should do something. Let's do it properly. How many of you do, not, do have an SLO for your service? Oh, that's more than I expected. One. Uh, <laughs> good. So SLOs, service level objective, means you want it to work at a specific level. So for, this is an example SLO. It says at least 99% requests succeed, succeed, which is known as two nines availability. Uh, at least 90% of requests are handled within 200 milliseconds, which is not very good, but bearable. And you do this over a month. So that means that out of every month, what's 1% of a month? A third of a day, right? You can have eight hours outage, complete outage every month, and it's fine. You don't mind. Uh, by the way, 99% is not terrible for a kitten serving thing. Right. So SLO should be good, ideally. Good SLO means that it's, you measure something someone actually cares about, ideally your users. You can have an SLO of the boxes of your servers being green, but it's not that useful. Uh, this is an aspirational goal, so it, you, I mean, it, it, it should at least be an approximation of some, something someone cares about. It should be measurable, by which I mean it has to be measurable. If you can't measure it, you don't know how well you're doing. I mean, you can, you can measure, you can have a slightly irrelevant SLO, so, for example, you can watch how many errors you are serving instead of how many errors your users are seeing, because your users don't care about your servers at all. But you have to be able to measure it. Right. And it has to be realistic. So, uh, a thing I forgot to mention in the slides, because I thought it was obvious, but now I think about it, it's not. Uh, it has to, it's, this is not a technical decision, right? So, talk to your customers. Talk to your product managers, it's called, I think. Agree on an SLO. As, an, as a, a sysadmin or a programmer, you, you do not set your SLO. You only say what a given SLO will cost and if it's at all possible. And of course, if your users and product managers decide on 15 nines of kittens, which is probably way too much, they, you will tell them you will ask for 10 to 15th power kilo dollars a month, and it will be fine. Probably not, still. Uh, it's, it's a trade-off, it's their trade-off to make. All right. But realism is good. Uh, by the way, so, so the, basically if you're, so you're serving kittens to people on, with cell phones, say, so the availability of your cell phone is not better than two nines by far as in something's always broken, your battery is dead, your connectivity is dead, that means that if you serve 3 nines availability of kittens, then the, all, all, of, all the problems that the users see will not be your fault, approximately all. And then it's fine, you don't need better. Right. And now we start alerting. <laughs> that means that you watch as many metrics as possible, but you really only care about whether, you are, whether your requests are being processed right. So you watch that. You watch, I, I will watch, for example, the error rate. If my error rate is such that if I don't do anything today, I will probably be out of SLO, I will page because I need to do something immediately. If 
my error rate is such that if I that I will run out of my error budget, that is how many errors I 500 I'm allowed to say uh, to serve in a week, I will ticket, and someone will get to it on Monday or sometime, right? Uh, there are exceptions, of course, because life is hard and things are nonlinear. So, for example, basically, uh, these are rough guidelines, but there are there are things like you predict your, the growth of your load, and if you find out you need another server in a week, you are probably in trouble. Uh, so basically try to, the, the point is setting the alert so that, that you always have enough time to, to fix everything and it will be fine. There are also capacity alerts. So, so having just enough cap serving capacity to serve your load, that is N plus zero it's called, is considered a production emergency. Having N plus one, so if you if one of those things catches fire now and dies terribly, you will have just enough capacity. That is considered a slight production emergency. Having N plus two is fine. If you if you can lose two boxes and it's fine, it's it's good. Right. And there are some some details. I, how much time do I have? Oh, good. Some other best practices. Uh, how many of you do actually run a, a monitoring system? Lots of people. How many of you store the configuration of your monitoring system in a source control system? Oh, again, more than I expected. Uh, and I know there's one more there. Uh, all right, how many of you do code reviews of your config monitoring configuration? One. Oh, that's way more than I expected. How many, right, how many of you have tests for your monitoring configuration? <laughs> Good. Uh, right, because of course if you, how can you trust it, right? You. Of course, you can break things to see if you get paged, but running a test is usually better. Right, and is this all? And of course, documentation and playbooks. Playbooks are important. So playbooks are documentation for people who don't know what they are doing. You get, it's, it's Monday morning, you haven't had your coffee yet, a page comes and you have to be able to react in the right way. In a well-designed system, that usually does not mean fixing the system. It usually means stopping it from serving errors for now and be able to fix it later. So, and this is just a small detail. If you have all, the, you have all those error conditions you know about, things that break and you might want to know, do not alert on them. Do tell the user if something really breaks. So if one of your 57 backend servers is down or on fire, you don't want to get alerted because one of your 57 backend servers is down or on fire approximately all the time. Uh, but if you get paged and the page says, well, 56 of your 57 backend servers are on fire, you might want to know in the ideal case, of course, you would automate all this. So, so if 50, 50, what? Six of 57 backend servers are on fire, the, the, the fire extinguisher system runs itself. But this is not always possible. So, and of course, if it is, what do you do? Right, so this is about the time at which I should get paged. No? No, all right. So I will get paged in a while because as you have seen, my kittens are serving, look, 500. My kitten server is serving 500. I like this one. Oh, right, and this one too. Uh, I don't like this one. Uh, broken, broken. Anyway, so I will try to, to demonstrate how and what an outage looks like. And I promise it will be extremely boring. 
this is how boring your life can be. Uh, I mean, those parts. So it's Monday again. You have it's early morning, say 11. Uh, you have come to work. You made coffee. You haven't started drinking it yet. And your pager goes off and says, says too many errors served for kitten service, right? So let's have a boring outage. This, by the way, still means that you are in, within SLO. Everything is fine. It's just that if you do not fix it today, there will be trouble. So you have about, what is it, 11? So we have 13 hours to fix it. Fine. Someone start the clock, please. So you have a playbook. Playbooks are good. Notice the reason this playbooks, playbook looks like someone wrote it in 10 minutes in a hurry is, well, there are two reasons. First, I wrote it in 10 minutes in a hurry. Second, I'm trying to show that a playbook written in 10 minutes in a hurry is useful. And you should have that, because it's so much better than not having one at all. So the playbook says, it means that the site is serving, well, you know what it means, right? So the alert signal says, it has a link to the alert signal, and there's a, oh, see, see? I'm serving almost a quarter of errors, which is a lot, for almost 10 minutes now. Here's my timeline, started at nine, and it is now, what? Oh, I see. Sorry, it's in, it's in UTC. What happened to the sound? Never mind. Uh, so I'm serving errors. All right. I, I know I'm serving errors. I'm just interested in what the alert means. So I do not want to fix this. I want to mitigate it. So whatever is broken can stay broken. I just do, don't want it to be broken in public. So Playbook says find the offending backend. Because the service, of course, has a bunch of backends, right? I mean, you have n backend servers. You don't just have one. If you just have one, then you are n plus zero on capacity, and that's a paging emergency. Right, see what happens. Oh, there's only one broken, which is kind of nice. I like only one thing being broken. And I see the backend. I, can you see that? Probably not. So the thing there says which backend it is. So I know what's broken now. And boredom continues. And it says that if a single backend is broken, I should drain it. Draining means removing a given thing from the serving pool. So I will not turn it off. I don't want to turn it off because it might have state. And if it has state and it's broken and I turn it off, then I will never find out what's wrong until it breaks again. And then I can turn it off again and then I will never find out again, which is not great. Uh, notice that this is written in a way that a person who hasn't had yet had coffee in the morning will understand. I, I actually tried to write it so that I wouldn't have to type at all, but didn't manage to do so, simply because I don't have a, a clicking interface for draining, but I will paste text, right? So I will edit a thing, oh, see? I will edit a thing, and this is the offending backend, Right, it's a canary, which means it's uh, one that devs push the new version to, which means someone moved fast and broke things. This is what happens when you move fast and break things. Right, oh, and this says I should reload it. So I will reload it, and then it says I should verify whether it's fine now. So let's look at the graph, still broken. Still broken. This might take a minute or so. Still broken. Yeah, that's annoying. Oh, it's going down. Also known as false hope. Sometimes you just wait. Oh, it's really going down. So I'm sampling points every 30 seconds, which means that reloading every five seconds is completely useless. You can laugh at me for that. 
It's deeply irrational. Oh, see, see, it's good, it's good, it's good now. It fixed itself. Well, it got fixed. Right, so this says it's fine, but just to make sure, let's continue with the playbook. It also says I should check that, that so I know I am now not serving errors, which is not enough in the usual case, because I want to know I am actually serving kittens. And there will be another graph, and this says, oh, look, these are my three backends, traffic for each, and reload. I don't know if you could see it at the end. You could if I zoomed in a bit. Right, see? So I had three backend serving, now I have two backend serving, the, the overall traffic is exactly the same, everything is working, the outage now ends. Was that boring? It was, great. And the playbook says notify your developers that they moved fast and bro broke things. Right. Uh, at, at no point did I have to touch any code. At no point did I have to try to find out what's actually broken, because I don't care what's actually broken at this moment. I will care later. Um, and I don't even have my serving backends instrumented in any way. All the metrics I collected are from a front-end proxy. This is on purpose and also because I was too lazy to instrument my backends. Right, that was our outage. That's a cat, and that's a beautiful kitten. And that's really all. Questions? Thank you very much for the questions. The, the most upvoted question is something you can Google and is literally the number one answer. So we will not uh, oh, spend the time here. I, the difference between SLO and SLA. Oh, I see. So which tool do you use for configuration management? For configuration, uh, you mean at work or at home? Both. Uh, at work, I probably can't tell you. But, but, but there's this book called Site Reliability Engineering, which you should read, all of you, now or today or something. Uh, it's somewhere on the, the, the web, somewhere. Uh, I'm sure you can find it. Uh, at work, we do have a source control system, of course. At home, I just use Git or something, I, probably. It doesn't really matter, right? You, you want to know who changed what and when, but the details are not that important. CVS would be fine. RCS, I hope no one here remembers RCS. RCS would be fine. Right. Thank you. Um, does Google use Prometheus for monitoring its own services? Um, no. <laughs> However, Prometheus was written by two gentlemen, Julius and Matt, who were, used to be Google SREs. And as the SRE book says, so I can tell you, it's a written on, uh, sorry, what, what this is doing, sorry. It's based on a monitoring system from Google called Borgmon, which I don't like very much. Um, <laughs> anyway, Matt is now back at Google, Julius is not. But his brother is. Right. Okay, um, is it good to have 99% if you're one hour a week offline? Maybe this hour is the most important for your business, like Friday at 5 p.m., for example. It's usually not a contiguous hour, hour, right? It's usually that you serve some errors sometimes, but depends very much. Talk to your product manager and talk to your customers, and you can move the outages around. So it turns out the most common cause of outages is, anyone knows? No? Developers. <laughs> I mean, this sounds terrible, but it's true, because changing things break things. If you don't touch anything, it will probably, it, in a well-designed system, if you don't touch anything, it will keep working for quite some time. So you should, you should freeze your production. You, I mean, not, not only should, not, should your developers not touch production directly, there should be a rollout tool which pushes only versions that have passed testing, but even if anything happens, it should not happen on Friday evening. Why Friday evening? Everyone's out drinking. You should not be clicking on the web. But 
Anyway, no pushes on Fridays, no pushes on weekends, no pushes on Christmas. Don't touch it. It will keep working. No, uh, by the way, I've once seen a graph of outages over by, by time of week, basically. Most outages in a, in a normal company that is not Google are caused by people coming back after the weekend and having brilliant ideas. <laughs> <laughs> There's a good one. Um, I'm not sure if you're allowed to share this one, but what is the SLO or SLA of Google? Never saw it down. Mm, first, I don't know. Second, uh, there probably isn't one, as in of Google, because Google has a few different services. Uh, I don't, I, I don't really know the SLO of the service I'm running, but I know the person who does. So I, I, I can ask him anytime. Thank you very much. <laughs>